in the first place. Because struggles will take us to the place, and I, I got to turn my amp off, y'all. It's buzzing. Oh. <laughs> Little stuff distracts me. Now, what was I talking about? Was it knowing the ark? No. <laughs> No, but we get, we get to that place and, and, and we, we realize that, that, that though we, we would not want to go through it, but we're glad that we've been through it because we know what our level is, what our strength level is, where walking in the Spirit is, where trusting God comes from, and, and, uh, and God's good that way. How many of you guys would say, and you don't have to do a show of hands, that you've ended up where you thought you would be? Or be exactly the place in life that you wanted to be, or, or those type of things. A lot of us, especially, you know, as, as kids, you know, uh, thought we would be, you know, NFL players or, or, or whatever, or a great businessman, or I don't know, firemen, policemen, or whatever. And then life hits, family hits. And then we set our, 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 our dreams aside for for just living, and then we, we, we get discontent because we're like, well, this is not what I signed up for. I, I didn't expect to see myself here. I didn't expect to, to, to be in this place that I am right now. I never wanted to be here. This is not where I wanted to be. But yet here I am. I've got some news for you. Where you are right now is exactly is exactly where God wants you to be exactly where he wants you to be he knows the beginning from the end he knows everything and he knows what's best for us and sometimes you know hey i wanted to be i wanted to be an actor you know i pursued that for a little while uh right out of school and stuff and and had some success with some groups and stuff like that but you know i, I saw the ugly side of it it wasn't how talented you were or how good actor singer dancer whatever you are it was really about who'd you sleep with and I'm just being honest. That's just that was the deal. And so uh, I just like, you know, I, I don't really want to deal with that. And there's a lot of, just because you're in that doesn't mean that you're a bad person. I mean, there's a lot of great Christians in, in film, thank God. But we get to the place, we, we're, we're not where we thought we would be. And when we get to that place and we begin to dwell on that, we get to the place that like, it gets us down. And another thing that, that will bring us down is, is, is when we get to the place that we begin to compare our life to someone else. Or do the what ifs. If I'd have done this, then this. Or if I'd have done this, this. My life would be different. Well, as far as I can tell by the word of God, your life is exactly where God wants you to be. Yes, we're going to go through struggles. We're going to have battles. We're going to have fights. We're going to have times of joy and peace and love and all these other great things, but we're going to have to live life. The first message of this series is going to be on contentment. Because if you can't be content with your life where you're at now, you're never going to move forward. I know people I have, and I told this story several times just because it's a really good illustration, but uh, one of the guys that worked for me when I was with the, the bank and stuff, he was a uh, he was the number one uh, uh, sales uh, person in the nation. He was a rep over North Carolina and had the biggest numbers and just everything he touched, you know, was great. I was over the East Coast, so I had everything, and he was the number one over the East Coast, North Coast, West Coast, everything. And he took a lot of pride in that, which is there's no wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. He did a great job, and the problem was is that he could, once the company went down, they ended up filing bankruptcy, probably because they were paying me too much. <laughs> that's a joke. That was not, that's not true. That was a little bit of sarcasm, to be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, he was never able to recover from that. He could never get beyond that, that one time of success that he had in his life. And yes, it was great success. And yes, he was used to being lifted up and held up as this great you know, person for the company and stuff like that. But then when he lost it, he still calls me, and that's been 20 years, has it been, since I worked for the bank? 
man, it don't seem like it. Yeah, somewhere around there. And he still calls me. And every time he calls me, I have to decide if I want to answer the phone or not. You know what I'm talking about, right? Just presume that if somebody doesn't answer their phone, they're not screening you. They just don't have it on them. You'll be happier. (laughs) But I will decide whether I want to talk to him or not because I know I'm going to hear the same story over and over again about how everybody uh, takes advantage of him. Nobody's treating him right. The, the businesses aren't running their business right. And he can't find a good job and, 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 and all this other stuff. And he, he wants to blame other people for his situation. I'm like, dude, come on. And he's always so negative. I think one of the last times I talked to him, I said, Mike, have you ever considered changing the way you talk? He says, what do you mean? I said, every time you call me, all you do is complain about all the problems and struggles and how everybody's, you know, wiped their feet with you and stuff and and that everybody's done you wrong. You never say anything positive. I said, you're alive. You breathe. There's a lot of great things that are happening. He didn't like that. And he quit calling me. Good or bad, it is what it is. We want to compare our life or our past life to our current life and say, I want to get back there. But that's not what we can do. I, I've met many people in business that have had their, their, their uh, time of success and fame, but they can never go beyond that because whenever it fails, then they keep trying to, to resurrect that dead thing. What worked then won't work now. You have to have a vision. You have to look forward. The second week, we're going to talk about intimacy next week. About, you know, strength through struggles. We're going to talk about intimacy. Then um, the third week, we're going to talk about authenticity. About being real. And and just being authentic. The fourth week, we're going to talk about compassion. Compassion. These are, these are some of the top struggles we face in our life and deal with. And the fifth one, we're going to talk about rest. And here's one thing that you're going to have to do if you want to walk in the rest of the Lord. You're going to have to turn these off. How many have them with them right now? Yeah, and some of you lied. <laughs> I know you did. And we've got them on now. Honestly, I, I have mine up here to, to, uh, to keep, keep an eye on the time and stuff like that. And plus, I don't mind you having them and stuff like that. I almost, I got mad at one of my worship leaders one time because we would, we would, uh, I would have the service and stuff. And after worship, he would go sit in the back and he was on his phone the whole time. And I had people say, you know, he goes back there and he doesn't even pay attention to you. I'm like, well, I never noticed that. There's a lot of people that don't pay attention to me, you know. So anyway, so I asked, I said, Ron, I said, man, you know, I said, you're on the phone all the time. He says, yeah, I got my Bible on there. That's my Bible. That's what I'm like, oh. So when I'm in class and seminary, I take my phone with me, and I'm like, it's the Bible. But we're going to have to enter into a place of rest, and we just have to to deal with, with life as it comes. And, and there is strength that comes through the, through the struggles in our life. Philippians 4, 12 through 13 says this. He says, I know how to get along with humble means. And I also know how to live in prosperity. And in any and every circumstance, I've learned to be secret, the secret of being filled and going hungry both of having an abundance and a suffering need. But I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. This is Paul who talks about it. And I know, I know that um, some of you guys, and I guess I am too, I believe I'm a faith teacher. I'm, I believe in, in the faith and speaking the word and believing it and receiving it and those type of things. But, but some people get to the place that, that they think that, well, if, if I'm serving God, I can never have struggles. That's just not true. In this life, you're going to go through. Here is Paul. Paul loved God. 
Paul met him, uh, he, on the road to Damascus, God you know, blinded him and, and converted him and everything. And here's a guy that, that truly loves God. He wrote most of the New Testament, but yet he says, there's been times that I've been in lack. And there's been times that I've had abundance. He said, but I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We see that Paul had a mental attitude of of worshiping God in every place that he went. We see that one of the times that we see Paul in a time of lack, when he and Silas were in the prison. Now, if uh, you were a real faith person, you say, well, if he would have spoke not to be in prison, he wouldn't be in prison. Well, that's not true. He was in prison because they wanted to put him in prison. Because he did things that they didn't like. But even in that place of prison, we see that Paul and Silas were put together. They began to praise God. They began to worship him in the midst of their downtime. And the times of their biggest struggles, they began to give God praise and worship. And it says, the chains fell off. The doors opened. And they were set free. And one of them was going to kill himself. And Paul said, no, no, hey, don't do that, man. We're all here. We ain't left. You don't have to worry about that. He ended up leading him to Christ and then leading his family to Christ. He could be like we are sometimes when we go through struggles, just sit there and, and whine and moan and complain about it and just say, poor pitiful me, you know. Or we can decide, well, wait a minute, what did God say about that? You know, not what, what would Jesus do. I mean, we know what Jesus did. Read the Bible. We know what he did. What would Jesus do? Don't mean that you're going to do it. The more important thing is, is what did the Word say about it? What does the Word say? It says, in all things, give God glory. Give God praise. Paul was uh, uh, saying that basically, although I've been in times of, 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 of humble means and I've had prosperity, But in every circumstance, I've learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both having abundance and suffering need. But even in that, he says, but it doesn't matter because I can do everything through Christ. And here's the deal. Sometimes God will put you in a place, in a circumstance, in a situation, not for your benefit. And it may not be something that makes you happy that you're thrilled about. But he may put you in that place for someone else's benefit. We see that in the Bible. We see that Joseph was placed in the Potiphar's house in slavery, in prison, but yet it wasn't for his benefit. It was for the benefit of a nation. It was for the benefit of a world that he would become the leader. But in the midst of that, although he, always, he went through the struggles in times of, of, of want and the times of need and being cast into prison and, and being sold into slavery, he kept praising his God. He kept honoring his God. And in that honor, we just see that God does a miracle and miraculous things in our lives. And you're never going to get to the place of contentment until you realize that you become content with your relationship with Christ. You've got to do it. It's not easy to do sometimes. A lot of people, I say, well, have you ever been mad at God? And I don't want everybody to raise their hands. And you'll say, oh, no, I've never been mad at God. You're lying. Most people have been mad at God sometimes. But listen, it doesn't upset God. He knows that, you know. You can't sneak up on him and say, you know, I was mad at you a while back. I said, gosh, Charles, I never knew that. <laughs> I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am Omniscient and omnipotent, uh, uh, omnipotent, no, <laughs> rented lips. Don't want, me, don't want me to use those big words. I'll get in trouble. But anyway, you know, it, it, it's God knows and, and, and he knows where we're at. And the thing of it is, is that we can be in the place of peace or we can be in the place of turmoil. But we choose to be in that place. Seriously. You can choose to be there. If you're in a pit, you can choose to get out of the pit. And if you're in the pit and you can't get out of the pit, then you can still praise God because you're in the pit. Because something's coming better. Many of us have been in the pit. You might be in the pit now. But 
uh, it's going to change. It's not going to stay the same. Paul said, though I've been in times of want, I've been in need, I don't have to worry because I can be strengthened in everything in my life because of Jesus Christ. If you want to make strength through struggles, then you've got to kill comparisons. Well, look at them. I've heard so many people say, well, look at those you know, evil people. They're just getting richer and richer, and we're getting poorer and poorer. Well, then their mindset is on rich, and your mindset is on poor. Whenever you pray, whatever you ask, believe that you have received it, and it shall be yours. If you want to stay in the pit, and if you want to stay, stay poor, then keep confessing that that's where you're going to be. Because God will not disagree with you. It says where two agree is touching anything, it'll be done. And that doesn't have to be just something positive. You can agree on something negative. Well, they told me I'm going to have cancer. I guess I'm going to die. Yeah, I guess you are. That's a death sentence, yeah. How many people uh, live through cancer? Raise their hands. Okay, two. <laughs> Praise God. Only two. The thing of it is, is that we, we, we see things and we think that, oh, no, God's given up on me or this and that. No, that's not the case. As you can decide, I've never seen a person die that didn't want to. And you're like, well, what do you mean by that? If you're a pastor, you've, I've been with a lot of people that have died. I've been with them. I've held them. I've ministered to them before, but the one thing that they get to is they say, you know what, Pastor? I said, I'm ready to go. I'm just tired. I just want to go home. And after a long fight, a battle of whether it's cancer or leukemia or whatever it is they're dealing with, then, you know, if you get to that point and you say, I, you know, I'm just tired. But if I found people that said, you know, I'm going to fight this thing. Me and the Lord's got it covered. I mean, you're going to dive yourself into scriptures and stuff like that, and God will bring you through, and he will bring you out of that. I've never seen a person die that had the will to live. I, a perfect example, I'm not mentioning any names or anything, but recently I've had a person that's been you're real sick and, and, and part of the family here and, and stuff, and, and the doctors keep telling her that you know, she's going to die. That, that, I mean, there's no reason for her to keep living. I mean, as far as medical reason that she should be living. And I said, what do you want? I mean, tell me, what do you want? If you want to go home, I'm okay with that. Your husband, your son, they'll be okay with it too. Because we know the struggles you're going through. But you've got to decide right now, do you want to live and keep living or do you want to go home? Either way, you win. And this was two, three weeks ago, which she was supposed to have been gone two, three weeks ago. She said, I, I'm, I don't want to go yet. I don't want to go. I don't, I don't want to be without my family. I don't want them to see me go like this. I said, well, then we're going to stand together and pray. If you want to live, we're going to pray for your life. She's doing really good right now. 2 Corinthians 10, 12 says, uh, For we are not bold to class or compare ourselves with some of, uh, of those who commanded themselves, but when they measure themselves by themselves and compare themselves with themselves, they are without understanding. We can't compare ourselves and class ourselves by uh, other people. And here's one big mistake we make in the church. We compare our righteousness with someone else's righteousness. And if they seem to be more unrighteous than us, then we brag about how righteous we are and how unrighteous they are. Because somehow that makes us feel uh, better about ourselves. Well, that's just crazy. 
Because you're judging, not only are you judging them, you're judging yourself. And I say this all the time. I don't, judge, don't judge someone else because their sin's different than yours. And that should hit home to a lot of people. Let's don't judge someone else because your sins are no different than theirs. Sin is sin is sin. So don't put yourself up on this big pedestal thinking, oh, I'm great and mighty and measured or whatever. Well, you know what? You're the same as me. You're a sinner like me. And you know what? If you know Christ, you're going to be in heaven with me. If you don't know Christ, you're going to go to hell and won't see you anymore. But the truth of the matter is, is that we can't compare and do comparisons in our life. It says in uh, James, but if you have bitter jealousy selfish ambition in your heart don't be arrogant and so lie against the truth the wisdom is not that which comes down from above but is earthly natural demonic for where jealousy and selfish ambition exists there is disorder and every evil thing that's the word says that i didn't say that i wish i could have come up with that but it's really good but where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there's always going to be disorder and there's always going to be evil things. Many of you guys, if, you know, and, and I'm, I'm just going to be honest with you, the best, or not the best, it's the worst place, the easiest place to be wounded is in the church. It really is. It's unfortunate because we, 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 we set a standard that we say has to be met by everyone else, but we don't even meet it ourselves. And so we find someone in a fault. What we want to do, we want to jump on the, 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 the beaten bandwagon, you know. We're going we're gonna to beat them like everybody else has, but that's not what Christ says. That's not what Christ did. That's not what the Word says. Whenever we get into the place of jealousy, and if you're, if you're bragging about your righteousness and complaining about somebody else's unrighteousness, you are jealous, and you're arrogant, and you're not intelligent. Aren't you proud of me? Thank you. <laughs> De nada. <laughs> but the truth of the matter is, 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 is when we get into comparison living, it's not a life at all because you're never going to compare to anyone else. No one else is going to compare. Uh, come up to your standards and guess what you're not going to come up to their standards and guess what you're not even going to live up to God's standards that's why we hear people say the, the the ground is level at the foot of the cross no one can come rise up and say oh look at me I'm great oh yeah they tried to do that remember they were talking about the perfect prayer and and the side well you know this guy stood up and and he pontificated for a long time Thee, thou, they, great God, merciful, all this other stuff. And then uh, the one person said, you know, Lord, just forgive me, I'm a sinner. He said, that's the greatest prayer. It's a prayer of the heart. A prayer of understanding that I am nothing before God. While you're nothing before God, you're also in a place of, of favor with God that he says, let me lift you up. He says, seek me while I may be found. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto us. I know we don't all walk around with our head in the Bible 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It'd be great if we could, but you, know, you wouldn't get anything accomplished. It'd be filled up with a lot of knowledge and it'd be useless. But yet, we do more when we walk out in the compassion and the caring that God has for us. The one thing that if you want to build strength through the struggles is, is kill comparisons. And you need to cultivate gratitude in your life. Uh, what's the big Tupperware guy, the great salesperson guy? You know, sold all the Tupperware? <laughs> Come on, y'all know. Uh, does those, you know, uh, build up classes things. Zig Ziglar, that's it. Did anybody know that? Okay. Well, I feel smarter than you right now. <laughs> I'm going to look down on you because you're not as intelligent as me. That's a joke. But Zig Ziglar was doing one of his uh, seminars, and this lady came up to him, and all she had to do was she was saying, you know what, I hate my job. I hate the people at my job. 
I hate what I do. I hate what I get paid. I hate everything about my job. And I don't know how to get over that. He said, well, just quit. <laughs> well, I can't quit, but I hate my job. He said, well, let's do this. He says, let's write down on a piece of paper some things you like about your job. And she said, there's nothing to write. I don't like anything about my job. He says, let me ask you, do you get paid? She says, yeah. He says, do you like that? Yeah. Said, and, and you're an executive, so you have a private parking spot, right, that nobody else has? Do you like that? She said, well, yeah. She said, well, what about insurance? Does, does the company provide insurance for you? She says, yeah. Do you like that? She says, well, yeah. And look, we've already found three things that you like that you said you hated about your job. He said, let's sit down and, 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 and uh, look at how many things we can find that you like about your job. Do you have vacations? Oh, yeah, I get paid vacations. How many? Two weeks a year. Do they build up? Yeah. How many weeks have you got that you could take off now? Four weeks. I said, do you like that? Well, yeah. Well, do you get bonuses on a regular basis when you meet quotas and those type of things? Or your, or your reps meet quotas? Do you get bonuses for that? Well, yeah. Well, do you like that? She said, well, yeah. And he says, here's what I want you to do. I want you to go home. I want you to write down all the things that you thought you didn't like but that you actually do like about it. And let's see how big that list grows. She comes back, and this list was huge on this uh, list of the great things, I mean, what she liked about her job. You know, she said, you know, she hated the people, and, and, and they were mean and all this other stuff. He said, how's it going for you? She says, I never knew it could be this good. She said, well, what happened? She said, God changed all them folks. You know? <laughs> She didn't get it, but she did get it. And a lot of us go through life and we, we, we talk about things we don't like or the things that we're struggling with, and, and, and then we focus on those, and that becomes reality in our lives. But when the truth of the matter is, when we sit down and, and we begin to think about, okay, yeah, I do get paid. You know, I do have a house. I do get to live in it. I have food. I have shelter. You know, uh, I'm not in jail you know, a lot of good things. When we look at those things, we realize that, that, that we live in the place of blessing. And what, he, what Zig was saying, and Zig is a, a great Christian leader, he was saying that, listen, the problem is not your job or the people. The problem is your perspective. Because you're looking through the eyes of, you know, meanness and struggle and all this other stuff and looking through the eyes of, of other people and judging them, what he was saying basically is this. If you get your eyes off of them and get your eyes on yourself, then things will change. That's why it says in the Word of God to judge so you be not judged. That's why we say here all the time, if you want to judge somebody in this place, then go find somewhere else to go. I know that's cold and we would probably grow more if I wouldn't say stuff like that, but it's just the facts. We're here to build people up. And if you're not here to build people up, then this is not the place for you. We need to build people up. It doesn't matter what they're going through, no matter what sin they're struggling with, no matter what part in life they're in, no matter where they are living, no matter what they're going through, we, they're human beings and they're brothers and sisters in Christ and our job is to build them up. It's the goodness of God that draws people to repentance, not the judgment of crazy people. Don't say nothing. <laughs> Just joking. But we have to cultivate gratitude. Proverbs 15, 15 says this. It said, all the days of the afflicted are bad. And then there's a big but there. <laughs> and you guys know I like big butts. Because they're getting ready to change the course of what's just been said. Right? But a cheerful heart 
has a continual feast. A cheerful heart has a continual feast. We can decide and we can place ourselves where we want to be in life, but we can choose that by the things that we decide to do or the things we decide to say or the the actions we decide to take. If you're not happy in a situation, you probably need to change yourself. And I know that was fun, wasn't it? Michael Jackson did get it right sort of the time when he said, you know, I'm starting with a man in the mirror. But we want to change everybody else. They're not, listen, you're not going to change them. Only God can change them. The only person you can change is you. And that really stinks. Ecclesiastes 6 and 9 says this. It says, what the eyes see is better than what the soul desires. It says this too is futility and striving after the wind. Then it says in Philippians, and I'm repeating it, it says, I've learned the secret of being content. And in every situation, This has been a struggle in my life as being to get to a place of contentment. Most people have a struggle in their life with contentment. And yeah, you know, I whine and moan just like everybody else. I just do it to myself usually, you know. And then we argue about it and I always win. So, But When I get to the places that no matter what my circumstances are, no matter what my situation is, no matter where I'm at, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter with what decisions I've got to make, God's got your back. He'll open the doors that need to be opened. He'll shut the doors that need to be shut. Your only uh, 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 requirement is to either walk through them or walk away from them. Since, you know, 2005, my decision-making has not always been the best, especially when it comes to the things of God, that, God, what do you specifically want? So here's been my prayer. I said, God, if this is the way you want me to go, then open this door, and I'll walk through it as long as it's open. If you shut it, I won't touch it. That's how we ended up with this place. We had many options that we were looking at, and it just like time after, and some of them were great options, but time after time, the door slammed shut, and I'm like, we're done. We're not going to touch it. This was the only door left open. So we had a choice to either walk through it or walk away from it. And God's blessed us. I mean, He really has. And he, want, he desires for us to, to, to live a life of full love and contentment in every part of our life. And sometimes you struggle with that, but I'm not. Well, you know, God will put someone in your path that will help you get there. But my contentment comes from this. The world can't do anything to me. I mean, they're going to throw me in jail, whatever. That's okay, whatever. You know, no big deal. My relationship with God is secure. But when I look at the Word of God, I see that no matter what struggles I go through, no matter what position I'm in, no matter where I'm standing, no matter where my place in life is right now, that God has a plan. And Jeremiah says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you a hope and a future. Whenever he says that I will meet all of your needs according to my glorious riches in heaven. When he says, whenever you pray, whatever you ask, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. He says, whoever speaks to this mountain and says to be moved but does not doubt will have what he says. Those are covenant words that God made with us and God is not slack concerning his promises. God can't lie. And whenever you look at the word of God and what he says about you, 
and what he's done for us. He's loved us while we were yet sinners. He loved us with an everlasting love. He gave his only son that whoever would believe in him would never perish but have everlasting life. Listen, you're on the winning team, babe. I mean, how much more could you want than that? So yes, stuff's going to come and we're going to whine and moan, but get over it. Because God's got a better plan. And if you don't know what his plan is for your life, then you need to spend more time with him and his plan. You need to get a God GPS. Because when you start going the wrong way, it'll come back. And this, you know, is a, a thing to me. I was one day thinking about my GPS, and I, I, this is just has nothing to do with this super spiritual moment right now. But has anybody ever yelled at their GPS? Yeah, I yeah. have. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. But I started thinking about what is what is what is a GPS? You know, we know what it is for the world, but, but it's really God's plan of salvation. And it works the same way as your GPS does. It's the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. And when you're, it's got the path for you to go down. And if you start taking the wrong turn, it'll tell you to do what? Turn around. When possible, please make a U-turn. Yeah, whatever. I've got Fred Sanford on mine. He says, turn around, you big dummy. <laughs> And that's not a joke. I do have Fred Sanford on my GPS. So that's where we're at. We build strength in the struggles of our life. Through Christ, we have strength. But to live a content life, you've got to kill comparisons in your life. You can't compare your life to anyone else's life. And then you've got to cultivate an attitude of gratitude. In all things, give God praise. In everything, give him praise. I'll close with this. I had one of the persons at the church that had went through a, a struggle and, and they had they'd lost their husband to, uh, to cancer and he was a good friend and, and, and we loved him. I was there with him when he passed away. And she said, I just can't, I don't have joy anymore. I lose joy. And if you ever lost someone, you've been there. It's like they, they were part of my joy. Well, yeah, because the two became one. You lost half of who you are. She says, I just can't find joy. I just don't have joy. I don't have joy. I'm like, well, it's okay. It'll come. But I don't know what to do. I said, here's what the word says. Give praise to the Lord. Rejoice. Sing honor to God. Thank him for the place in life that you are right now. Thank him for, his, for the life that he's put inside of you. And, and just go down the road, put on some praise music, and just sing it continually, continually, continually. But I don't feel like it. It doesn't matter what you feel like. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And it took, it took a couple months, but she came up one Sunday. She says, Pastor Charles, I said, what? She said, today I got joy. I said, praise God. She was happy. I said, how'd you do it? She said, I did what you said. I praise God. I thank God. I give him glory for who he was and what he's done in my life. And, I've, and I praise him. I sing him praise every morning. So maybe where you're at today, I don't know. I know God's got a plan for you and he wants you to, 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 to realize that though you may go in through struggles that's not going to last and he'll give you the strength when you're struggling with decisions it's okay go with the way that you feel like God's leading you listen to what he says well how do I know what he says it's that crazy thought that goes in your mind that you think is not God but it really is God when you learn to hear the voice of God you know it is because you'll have a conversation Maybe you're in a place today that you, you, this message kind of hit you and you're like, yeah, man, I, I really needed this. Well, that was not a mistake. It was God's plan. Maybe you're here today and you've never stepped across the line of faith. I mean, all the things that Christ did for us, he gave his, shed his blood for us. God gave up his son that, that we would believe in him. And the Bible says real clearly, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And you can go through and quote a lot of other scriptures, but that's one of the scriptures and he meant it. 
And it's that simple. It's not about how good you are, how good you can be, or what good things you can do. It's about surrender. Maybe you're here and you're going through some struggles in life right now. And, and the joy has kind of been sucked out of you. We can pray like David prayed. Would you guys bow your heads? And just pray with me. I want to pray first for those that are believers that are just going through stuff right now. Uh, the Lord just wants you to know, listen, he, he's, he's, he's there with you. He's been there with you. He's, he's seen and heard every prayer you've had and, 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 and you're not sure which way to turn, but he's going to open up a door and he's going to confirm it to you this week and you're going to know exactly what you need to do. Just pray this in your heart and say, Father, thank you that although I may be in some struggles right now, I know that your word is a blessing into my life. And, and, and I know I want to pray the same prayer that David prayed when he was struggling. He said, Lord, just restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Lord, take the things in me that need to be removed. remove them and maybe you're here and you've never really just made that one true commitment to Christ it's real simple it says whoever calls on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ will be saved if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and he's the son of God then that's it by faith you accept him would you say this prayer with me where you are? Father, thank you that you love me so much that in my rebellion, in my not loving you, you gave your son for my life. So Lord, I'm calling on your son, Jesus Christ, right now to be my Lord and my Savior. And I'm surrendering myself. I'm giving myself to you the best I know how right now, Lord. I trust you to help me in this new life. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for not judging me. And for saving me.